Hey guys, Khalif from Click Fanatics Magazine here, yeah. and today we've got another special guest with you with us today, and we've got Jason Smith from the Cobras. So we're gonna get to know Jason a little better on this one. I want it to be a little bit more fun, but also obviously get into his story a little bit and get to know him a little bit better. So Jason, um, welcome to the show. It's on lock on lockdown as it's titled. So let's start with that. Um, let's start with lockdown. How's lockdown been for you? What sort of training regime are you are you keeping up? And have you guys been given programs? And with regards to your actual cricket, how do you keep your cricket skills sharp? Do you have any tips for anybody? Yeah, so in general, I've I found the lockdown okay. Um, I don't have problems with staying indoors and staying at home all day. So from that perspective, I don't mind it at all. Um, but yeah, throughout the day. Um, I try to keep myself busy, so um, have a cup of coffee, have breakfast or something, and then try to wake up. Um, and then I try to do an hour of some sort of physical activity, whether it's running or a bit of body weight stuff outside. Um, but then most of the day, I'm probably sitting around playing games, whether it's PlayStation or Nintendo. Um, yeah. yeah from a cricket perspective um there's not much you can do um i'd say i'm kind of limited with space so i'm lucky i have people around me that actually want to go play outside um that have been playing outside and just trying to get back on ball <laughs> <laughs> are you winning those battles outside I would think so. I mean, I'm trying to make a competitive low. So I'd say it's, it's fair yeah. at the moment, but I know we've, we've tried a few things like taping the ball up on one side to get it to swing, which is made it interesting. Awesome. Yeah, I, do. I miss those days when you could play in the, I don't have anybody in my area that really uh, that's, that's similar age or younger that wants, that will do those sorts of things. Um, yeah. Got a granny opposite. I don't think she can hold the bat anymore, and a granny next door, but I don't know if she can. So <laughs> I'll have to go invite some of you guys open for some street tickets someday with a and a barai. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I remember actually Zubi. I used to next door. His friend used to stay next door to me. I had been to school with him. So I think once twice I played with him in the street once or twice. I can't remember if I remember correctly, but it was a long time ago. But anyway, so let's move on to your cricket because I've, I speak to you often, but we don't really go into the, the details of your past and um, how cricket was for you when you started, etc. And I really wanted to get to know you a bit, bit better and your journey a bit better. So can you maybe just give me some insight into how you got into cricket and what your path was like before you hit the provincial, senior provincial sides, etc.? Yeah, so I mean, I suppose it all started with the the standard Baker's mini cricket. That was that what it was called at the time. Um, yeah, and it was all just fun at primary school. I think that was grade two, grade three. Um, and then yeah, I think when I got to to grade four, I think that's when you started or when we had, when we started playing hardball cricket. Um, I, I was actually scared to to pick up a bat because I. Was, I was just scared of the ball coming at me. And yeah, I started and I put my, my father to stop at me. Um, and yeah, so he got me the bat, took me from Clement at Clement Cricket Club. And I think that's kind of where it started. You take me through the balls at me, bowl at me. And then, yeah, I just got in. Um, I remember scoring, maybe say, I think it was 94, probably like my second or first grade, my game in grade four. And that was, I think, straight after my dad took me to the net. And I think ever since then, it just kind of kicked on. Um, the enjoyment for the game. Um, and then, yeah, so then from there, 
Um, I think I was lucky enough to go to Wyoming um, Boys. I only had the option of going to Wyoming or Sex. So I don't think I wanted to go to Sex. So Wyoming was obviously the the definite choice for me. And I uh, wasn't really a fan of Ronda Bosch. So that wasn't oh. the, in the picture. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so um, before you started the school you have a massive clique it's about like 50 boys that are that are there and um so i went through all of that and then when it got to the last 13 i was actually put in the b team um at the time like i didn't i didn't think anything of it for me it was okay i'm at the new school there's a lot of boys that are that are good at cricket and so that game, the second game got 50 odd, and then I got a 14 18. And then in my first three games, I got three first ballers. So, do you know, I still remember David? He was there at the time, played with David Biddingham, and you used to just give me a lot of abuse for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but then from there, um, my foot coaching, um. That was at DP. Um, and then, yeah, I think from there, I got, I was technically a lot better. And things really started getting to playing cricket. Um, I started opening the bow, and then they moved me to three. Um, yeah, and then I went to trials under 15. Nothing really happened. I was new. No one knew I was. Um, that was grade eight, and then I went to the same trials in grade nine, and then um, I managed to make the the provincial under fifteen team. And I think I did I did fairly well at the under fifteen week. Um, and I think yeah, I think that's where I started getting noticed quite a lot at school, especially. And yeah, at school, I mean, then from there, I played in the first side. Um, I think we had a really good school team at the time as well. Um, in my grade, even year, seven to nine players in the cup team or in some sort of provincial team. So we were always a competitive sure. team itself. Um, yeah, and we did fairly well. So I think. I think that just motivated me and made me enjoy my cricket a lot more because we were, we were playing well and it was always enjoyable because the guys that were in the team were always, we were always friends with each other. So it just made it a lot, lot more in cricket. And then, yeah, um, grade, grade 10, was it grade 10? Yeah, grade 10 made the under 17 provincial team. And then, unfortunately, just before, before I think it was, it was before that week, I injured my knee. Um, playing in a game, actually running between the wickets, I slid and somehow I tore my meniscus. So I missed the under 17 week. Uh, um, yeah, whatever else. Um, but yeah, I mean, from there, it was just always enjoyable. Because even with those co teams, the Cubs, the HDS, and the 19, we, all, we always had friends and people that are new in those teams. So doable. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, what was those tours like? Um, being at school and being on tours, etc. What are those like? I mean, must be a lot of fun with the boys. Sure. Um, the school tours, especially. Sure. I know they don't have it anymore, but back in the day, we had a bit of a, yeah. a, a few initiated, but it was all it was all for fun. No one was hurt or anything, but it was yeah. just fun, and we enjoyed it. They enjoyed it. So it kind of brought us closer together from school, and then at those tours we playing against the same people all the time. So we're becoming friends with them as well. So 
for instance, are on the Bosch. A, a lot of us became quite close to them because David had friends that he was close with in the on the Bosch. And I think we all would always just link up together and yeah, even the nonsense that was caught on between the two sides was also quite fun. Yeah, so we all know that the famous thing for you would have been being part of that that World Cup under nineteen team that lifted the trophy and um there was a lot of pressure on your shoulders um from an early age already people calling you the next best thing etc etc how did you deal with all of that pressures and talk to me a little bit about that being part of that world cup side with the likes of kg when he was younger and obviously aiden markram etc yeah so just on the whole expectation thing at a young age i didn't know anything about it um i I found myself Whenever I was put into a new sort of level, I always found to well, find myself wanting to figure out how or what I could do to be able to do well at that level. And, and so I think at and 19, the S under 19, um, I think coming into that setup was actually a great experience for me because when we were brought in, myself, Aiden, a lot of the new guys at the time, we got to play with guys that went to a previous class that had played this in the 90s before. So we were able to learn from them. And yeah, yeah, I mean, from my memory, I think we went to India um, and they were at our World Cup, they were the favorites. So we played them out of we played them four times they won us twice we beat them twice and so i think to a, a tri series in in india against india and australia and i think beating india in india kind of gave us that sense that we could actually do something greater than than just qualifying for semi-finals and then losing Actually, that we could actually go all the way. And I think at that time as well, the fixtures were already out. So we kind of knew that we needed to take this form. Yeah. Um, during during a, a tournament quite well, I mean, like, the KG, I think they hit they form. At the perfect time, I'm doing. Um, I mean, and I remember actually being quite close to him at the time, and he would actually speak quite a lot. Uh, he didn't make his uh, his thing change was the at the time pulled him up. Actually, and just to see how he came back at the World Cup was just unbelievable. Um, KG as well. He's just a, he was just an X Factor player, and just I mean, two of them had within the squad. I think by to to us winning that World Cup, I and mean, there was bowlers that were also doing the job behind them. And I thought up of how our bowlers were taking all the wickets, and it just showed that they were the good length a lot more often than we just leave the rewards from that so i mean that is always an amazing experience it was in dubai um, yeah and i think the stadium was newly built or it was fairly new so to experience that was also something i remember um yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah, uh, speaking to Aiden before, he, he mentioned that to me actually, what you mentioned about the fact that he came out of, kind of, he felt like he came out of nowhere, almost Ray Jennings pulled him out because he didn't make the coke quick sides, etc. And um, yeah. it was almost like a surprise for him that he was selected. Um, talk to me about Ray and what he was like as a coach. Um, there's a lot of players that speak highly of him. Um, some people say he's a very tough guy to be, to work under. Um, talk, talk to me about Ray himself and also what that trial process was like before being selected for the squad. So, um, for me personally, I mean, I think he got along with our squad a lot better. Um, 
for me, he wasn't as hard from from what I heard from guys that played before. He wasn't that hard in us. Um, I don't know why. And I think maybe he was trying to find out the new way or or a new approach of how to deal with that sort of setup. Um, um, I mean, he did. Uh, he was a usual. But I remember we played England in Stellenbosch with the Minara series. And it just be remember um, this is you always um so I was tired, I did nothing, and then I had to go warm up to bowl. And I remember him coming in, and as he was, I mean, I bent down. I don't know in his eyes what, I was, I'm unsure of what that meant to him. I think he took it as I'm not listening to him, I'm ignoring him. And after we won that game, he went off at me. Um, but I think he's, his approach is his kind of, it either makes you or it breaks you. Um, so I, I was in that situation. I just apologized, took it on the chin, moved on. Um, but yeah, from from the the I know before that Indian series, there's a lot of guys. Um, I think the team and what he you know just do this actually was there. Aid. And I think I'm dealing with yeah. We had with you. I think the dance squad. And I didn't yeah. coming down from yeah. England. Um, oh, wait. Um, yeah, I think I. So, so I came. And Cam, George, and it's just a beauty. That was all that we had. And then we went to India, and then it was the Cubs. Cubs we could get. Yeah, so obviously, there was a few changes from the Indian. About six, six or five changes. Yeah, I just, yo, I remember guys were, they were, uh, there's a, I don't want to mention names, but there were some. Uh, you were eating around school. You some sort of crap. Uh, the cubs, we it wasn't so it woke up. So it was kind of an emotional. Emotional going through that and quite well we spent time before and uh, we became quite close leading kind of up now so, yeah you were just breaking up there can i just ask you to rejoin the stream again can you just quickly and rejoin again um, we are having some problems with the okay. with the connection. Cool. Cool. Sorry, guys. Um, I know it's a bit jumpy. I'm going to ask him to try to give us some of that again. Um, obviously, being the connection has been quite an issue during this period. Um, Jason's just going to um, reconnect again and let's see if we can have a better luck going for the rest of the the uh, story. So, guys, get the guys that have they have signed in now to watch and um, put your questions in the comment section below obviously and then we can um you can i'll obviously ask jason them at the end of the show um try to ask him something that's different um things that you might have known about him or wanted to know about him so we're just going to wait for jason to to come back on board again and get the the connection sorted out so yeah yeah he is let's see yo yo <laughs> it's the problem with the live stream sometimes. 
uh, does sometimes kick. So I'm you're gonna um, I missed some of it of what you were telling me about. Um, you said that you were bent over for the ball, etc., with Ray, and then he had a go at you, and then you just oh, took it on the chin and you. Somewhere. So um, a lot of jumpy after that. Um, so can you just maybe talk and take me through a little bit about that again, um, about that period? Oh, um, yes. Just yeah, I was sky next you. From I think I spoke about um where I think it took and that was the that's where I selected this but the the in guys they such he was great, quite a good squad, and um, in uh, the India, I don't think, I think that they they walk before the World Cup, where I think they made a bunches. So obviously they were guys mm. that that got very emotional. Um, there's a guy that finished leading and scored. Uh, he was a cup squad because he was in the squad before. And I don't think he did. He, he did that. Um, he got dropped, and I remember him um, just throwing his stories. And I know I heard the air and lost it completely. So it was quite a length, you know, period. Yeah. To the World Cup, we had uh, for about two weeks a lot close. So I think that kind of lot in making steps towards winning the World Cup. Cool. So going on to the your your role in the Cobra side, of course, you were quite young in a young side. Um, and obviously at the beginning when you came in, it was a more experienced side. So, can you talk to me about those two different regimes um, and how you feel right now about the current situation? You talk to that question, sorry. Yeah, so I said um, you were part of two different regimes, obviously. Like you, when you came into the side as a youngster, you were with a lot of experienced guys at first. And then now you guys are kind of building a over the side that's a lot younger and fresh. And now currently you, the junior guys that were young before now becoming the seniors, you, Zubay, Kao, George, you guys are now becoming the hub in this and the seniors in the side. So can you just maybe talk to me, me through those different regimes? Yeah, so I know when we had to uh, and George, we got our first contact, and I think that was the speed, the worst periods that do. Um, that the time where the players weren't happy with the coach, but at that time, um, the it's more on a good, a good perspective. So I hope to find good. There was times where after training, we'd all have to meet on the meeting day and we had to boycott certain things. So it was kind of a stressful time because because we were new. Um, what we were saying was kind of being manipulated by both sides of the party. So that was very old when we were experiencing that, but I think what made it better 
was wasn't one of the two members that was going to the exact same situation. That made us closer. Um, and yeah, I mean, going into our current situation, um, I think it's weird because I was actually I was thinking about that 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 same talk with with Sophia that we and all the senior guys that we used to look out and so to bring to the party. Mm -hmm. How we want to leave this squad. I think going how the team going for where you're just coming out, you kinda of focused on yourself. You you kinda of tend to find your feet and you're more worried about what you're doing. Where I think we can as well. We can and not just and yeah. I think yes so and, go for it yeah go for it continue it's still jumping a bit man so I'm struggling to know when you finished or not <laughs> oh um yeah no I just wanted to say and I think we we are now I think there's been more the guys that have not and all of them are the better players as well. They actually very nicely. I think we have a well balanced square right now. I think we're a younger squad, we always looked at always be able to think us being a lot younger. It's actually pretty show and I think that could mm. actually mm. do a lot. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So, with regards to the, the, the new additions to the style, etc., you have obviously have guys like um, Tony Rizzozzi that has joined. You have guys like um, obviously Corbin Bosch, etc. You that you you would know a little bit about them playing against them, etc. Just tell me about um the new additions and how excited you are for them coming to join the side of course um i've played a, um in my debut provincial season he actually cleaned me up a few times um and then Calvin as well played against him actually quite a lot over the years. Uh, I mean, um, so yeah, I mean, all the players goes about it a certain way, and I, I think he, he you know, plays um, plays his game play positively, and I think I think he'll feed off very nicely off Ashwell. I think the two of them will link up very well. And the same with Calvin. Um, from a batting perspective, I think he's also a player. Many players that can do will work wonders with him. And yeah, Corbin, um, I'm actually excited facing him not out in the middle. Um, he's quick balls, he can shape it as well. So I think we've got some good, good prospects for the white boy and the red ball. Cool. So that's awesome. I'm going to go now into some of the, the fan questions and then I'll put them on the screen and then you can answer them. Um, so here's the first one. This uh, GOG wants to know quickest bowler that you've played so far. Um, a few times where I face guys that ball quite quickly, time that I can remember. Um, Magala, um, I think, um, for me, it was just absolutely rapid. I was blocking the ball, but the ball was still somehow hitting the back of the net. 
I was making contact before was still hitting my bat and going to the back of the net. So for me, that felt pretty quick. Uh, I think on MSL, he, before the first game, we had a few net sessions. And I think at the time, he was ready to show, okay, listen, I'm going to bowl fast now. And myself, I remember Yanas. And that was the third one. Go and so I think Anna and Magala. Sure. Yeah. I mean, Anna, Anna was bowling quite quick in that, in that MSL, that first MSL. I mean, he was clocking it up 150 or when they, when they showed it. So, I mean, there was guys like Abel de Villiers that even said he had to. They say when Abel de Villiers has to stop and check a few balls before he starts having a go then you know the guy is has some serious pace so yeah that that's pretty awesome okay then i want to there's a there's a special guest that is, there's a special guest we have on the show over here uh that maybe wants to ask you a few questions <laughs> i think it's me uh <laughs> Jason's having a bit of a problem here with his so just, uh, just rock up here. I would. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see anyone though. Yeah, it's all to be fair. <laughs> Someone shaved, eh? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? How's the guy fighting? Connection is bad. Yeah, the connection. Right, yeah, let me see, let me see quickly if I can change the connection a bit. Sorry. Nah, can't hear anything. Nah. In the They're a little better. Okay, there we are. Is it better? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Jason? Yo. What's up? So this is the Q&A section. Yeah. I'm alright. Who's on the question? Yeah. No, Zubi can ask the question if you want to. <laughs> I can't hear anything. Uh, who, wait, who's asking is, this? Is it not connected properly? I think it's a poor connection. Yeah. Let me just see something. Um, let's see. Uh, sorry, I'm a, I might have just spoiled the show now. <laughs> you <with> the <those>, it. <laughs> Sorry guys, technical difficulties over here. Yeah, I can know. hear you. Now there's a bit of connection problem, man. Um, don't know if it's my side or it's your guys' side, but I think it's two against one, so maybe it's my side. I don't know. I can hear you. <laughs> cool. Jason, are you good? I don't know. Now I can hear you. I do need better Wi-Fi though. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What have you guys been talking about? I want to ask questions that have already been answered. Now we were talking a little bit about his career so far. Um, you always were saying that he has your you his bunny in the net. So um. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You can't, you can't lie about that. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay, I'll give you that one. Oh, is it? I made that up now. <laughs> He's gotten me out. He actually doesn't let me live this down. He got me out uh, on the this Weinberg first team. Um, so he'll constantly tell people that he bowled me through the gate. But what he doesn't know is I also got him out. And he never, ever tells anyone <laughs> that. 
but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'd rather take a poll than Is that long one. Ah, yeah, both or not being able to reach the boundary, one of the two against both the Ospinners. Your guys friendship, when did you guys... <laughs> when did your friendship start, the two of you? Like, when was the first time you guys like met each other? Yo, I can't even remember, to be fair. It was... Probably in school still. I'd say maybe. I don't know if it was under 13 or under 14. I know we played indoor cricket together. I don't know. That was before school. Yeah, right? that's it. That was like under 11. Yeah, I started Yo. under 13 or under 14. So, yeah, so say 2008. Those... 2008. Probably. Yo, if you guys, if you guys were a couple, though, yo. <laughs> so, <laughs> couple. Probably, probably, yeah, 2008, yeah, probably then. Um, then we played against each other, cricket and hockey, and then we played with each other provincially, cricket and hockey throughout school. <laughs> yeah, and then you're always going about how Weinberg used to beat us in both. Both the uh, codes, um, but not in my matric year for, for cricket, that's for sure. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's fine. You can have the bragging rights, I guess. <laughs> I think everybody can see you guys in proper banter, Luke. Yeah. Zubi, you have any questions? <laughs> uh, yeah. um, sure, I didn't even think of any questions. Uh, what's your goals for the next, the upcoming season? What's, what's the goals? Like, what's your individual goals? Um, it doesn't have to be runs or wickets, it can be whatever you've kind of wanted to improve on or wanted to achieve in the next season. Yeah, so obviously there's technical faults that I'm fixing improve one um, too much in, um, obviously. Um, but yeah, also so wanting to add to my bowling as well. Be more con um, just be a, a better uh, no former it's good. So he was gunning you for your connection, but I think this connection is pretty bad with you. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. How close are you? How close are you to the group? How? Oh, we'll find a spot. How, how close are you uh, to the mode? I'm very close now. I'm trying to fix him in like I'm going back to my Indian roots here, trying to fix his Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's darker here though, but I'm right next to the modem. Okay, so I can hear you clearly. That's a lot better. Okay, yeah, sure. So it was me all the time. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, cool. So, what were you saying, Claire? What did you do? Oh, so the the first thing was to work on back, from a batting perspective to fix a few technical faults. Um, don't get basic reasons not to expose that. Um, yeah. And yeah, so to to add a yard or two to my bowling um, and become more consistent. I think in my the season past, um, I wasn't as consistent as I was before. 
And yes, and I think adding a yard or two would, would do me a lot better. And then just to be a, a in general, to be a better performer and to, to be more angry for myself and for the squad. Yeah, and also, Jason, are you going to have Zubi as your captain? He's your mate, obviously, off the field, but like, obviously, I'm talking about. Oh, you ca- are you ca- are you captain? So, like, friend, you know, that he's your friend off the field, but now, um, with him as your, as your captain, of course, um, what is it like to play under his captaincy? Does it has it changed him at all as a player or as a person? <laughs> it's changed such a lot. No, to be honest, um, oh, yeah. it, actually, it doesn't really affect him at all. I'd say, in, I'd actually say it's actually made him a better cricketer. Um, I think he's always he's always one that's wanted to take up the leadership role, and he's been wanting to take mm-hmm. charge. So I think that was the perfect platform to him just to show that. But yeah, he hasn't he hasn't really changed. Um, he's always been that person that's an actual leader. So yeah, and Zubi, um, yeah. for for ja- uh, managing Jason in your side, etc. I mean, you're gonna have to manage your bowlers quite well throughout the season, different format, etc. Um, looking at him from a captain's perspective, but doesn't um, does it? Do you look at him differently now just because you're a captain, or how does that work? No, um, I've always um, valued what he brings to the table. I think he's been, he's had a tough time over the past few years in terms of regular opportunity. And not always has that been based on performance. It's been based on, for example, we've had, well, in the Cobras squad, there's been guys like Rory and Vern who majority of the time in certain formats they get um, based on what they've achieved and the quality of player that they are, they've mm-hmm. obviously been gotten the opportunity to play in the Cobra side whenever they were available. Mm-hmm. And it's been tough on him because regardless of um, his performances most of the time, yeah. uh, still that would then miss out uh, based on guys like that that comes back into the side for example so now that for example Vern and Rory have are done um, playing for the Cobras or actually I don't know if if like who's going to be available but I know Rory's retired Mm. Um, it brings about because Jason can bat and bowl equally good equally well he can do well in both areas in any given game he kind of falls a very important spot in terms of balancing a side out as well so from my point of view it's just about giving him while well, making sure that he gets regular game time so that he can then bring what he can to the party basically it's hard yeah. to it's hard to then do well and get dropped and keep your mental positivity going. Yeah. It's, it's just natural. It's part of the game. Um, and no one can say they it doesn't affect them if they play well and then happen to miss out. And that's not his fault because, I mean, also if you look at the from the coach's point of view, if a guy like Vernon is available for your team, then what are you going to say? A guy who's played international cricket, you're going to put him in your side. So yeah. it's it's been hard in terms of that, from that point of view. Um, but as a player in the squad, I just want him to get regular game time so that he can then, you know, do sure. what he's capable of doing. Yeah. And what he, then he can at least become more, not content, but he can kind of take a spot in the side with both hands and keep onto it and almost pin down his name in every single game yeah. throughout the format. So, yeah, Jason, 
hearing that from your captain, of course, and from your friend as well, um, what does that do for you? And also, maybe this is an opportunity to throw in a question over here because it's, it's quite an interesting one. Um, where Daniel's asked, where do you like to bat in a longer format? And because of the game, because that also shows the public as well how you bat yourself. So, where do you prefer to bat if you had the opportunity? To be fair, I'd like to bat four, five, or six. Um, I mean, in the longer format, when there's days where you get overs under the belt and you feel fatigued. So, it's quite tough to actually physically to go out and bat straight, straight away. So, I think preferably I'd take four. Um, yeah, just because it gives you some amount of time to kind of recover and then mentally prepare yourself to go out and back. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a continuous question, question over here for me. There's a second one when he's asking, do you think that you want to continue to develop yourself as an all-rounder or do you see yourself moving into more of a special, specialist investment type of role? Like, I don't know if that's a colors kind of reference because that's what he kind of did. He pushed himself up right up the order and bowled as a bow. Um, in what bracket do you see yourself moving? Yeah, I mean, I think that always I'd want to develop more as an all-rounder. Um, having that, ex that extra option of bowling always helps balancing teams out. So I think having that is always, it's, it gives you a bit of advantage over anyone else so i think it's just i think kind of developing my bowling to a point where i'm able to contribute a lot more and that that is kind of sorted out for itself yeah okay so a little bit more no. fun question yeah. yeah a little bit more fun questions now got one from emily norris and this is the both of you between you and zubair who's the better fever player <laughs> That is such an easy question. Emily Norris, yes. that's your or Subi Alvita. Definitely that guy. He's gotten, he's gotten dull to it. <laughs> there's, there's been plenty of times where Subi just takes the control, pushes start, and just goes to the restart button. The yeah, range I'll, give it it I'll give it to him. Majority of the time, you beat me. But you know, when I do beat you, I'm going to celebrate, though. So... <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Jason's definitely the the better FIFA player. I'd call him a a, a PS4 professional. Really, he's been playing all of these games. I don't know who in the fan section enjoys playing Fortnite and what what's the other game? Uh, Apex. Bro. What's the other one? Yeah, Apex. Apex. Jason's always on that. I'm always playing those games. That's the game I was talking. I was thinking about because Vian came on, Vian Mulder came on, and he spoke about that. I think that he also plays that. So um, he meant um, Tom Tom Hendricks. They they also like playing Apex. Yeah. So I must get that as well. I just downloaded a walk. Are you playing um, Call of Duty? Sure, that file is too big to download. Zuby Zuby has to download it. Zuby, the download will only finish next year. <laughs> 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 Zubi tried to, what what did he try to download a couple of weeks ago? Did it finish? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, um, I've been trying to download this game for like three weeks. That's how bad my Wi Fi is. And it's like it's hardly moved, so pointless me, Bring your PlayStation to me, we'll download you. Sure. <laughs> Make it so forward. Um so with regards, I would ask you that because there's a idea that we might be doing. I spoke to George already. Um, you know how competitive George is with FIFA. Um, you George have two new guys. Add <laughs> <laughs> Carl to that as well. <laughs> so I can compete with George and Carl definitely. Is it? Yeah. So we got this. The, your two new guys that are coming into the side as well. Um, Obviously, I spoke to them as well. They also mentioned, sorry, I'm from Borland. Um, so, Kapil Dean, obviously, and Abrams, Ziad, and um, Ishmael. So, they both said that they want to, they keen to take on you guys in FIFA. 
So um, can play. I, I think Rafis can play FIFA. Okay. So we're gonna get a little tournament going after this lockdown. If you guys are keen, and we can have so a chat. About yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically. <laughs> basically, we get a tournament next year after after COVID nineteen is done. But then it's enough time for you to practice. Really. <laughs> if I start downloading FIFA now, I'll probably get it next year as well. It's more hard for FIFA now. Luca, you are United supporter. You guys play Liverpool versus United on FIFA. No, we actually play a randomized majority of the time. Uh, we randomize through country, league, and team. Oh, yeah, you play five times or three times. And then... yeah. You get no. You've got ten, ten randomizers over all three categories, and you have to choose the tenth one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that. Yeah. So a lot of the time was like Manchester United versus Kaiser Chiefs, basically. <laughs> Jason, Jason always you, the best teams. Jason, do you play Ultimate Team as well? No. I don't even have the new FIFA because <laughs> don't play that at all. Okay. But I do know there has been times where got the Chiefs have destroyed Barcelona. I wouldn't say who was a who, <laughs> but I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Must be tough. <laughs> Uh, who's the worst? Who's the worst FIFA player in the squad, though? Like in the team? Like, would you say? Carl. Carl. <laughs> Carl. I wouldn't have thought that. Actually, you've got a whole lot of like yeah. intermediate players, like myself, Carl, George, and then you get. Okay, I don't know how Tony is, um, but then you get like Jason and Lanze who loves playing oh those are like the top top competitors sure. i think i'm gonna get my i'd say the, the worst was david <laughs> i mean david was with us david david was the worst but does david play i don't think david played any games or anything i think it was he like into those type of stuff he, he tries to but then he just stopped he puts it on the easy, I know you. easiest settings so you get <laughs> I know um, you into board games. Can you name some of the you board games so. that you that you enjoy? Um, yeah. So One Night Werewolf. It's been a newish game that we figured out. Um, been playing Boulder Dash. Bit of Monopoly. I think that's all I have at the moment. Yeah, I don't have anything else, but I will play anything else. What else do we usually I play? 30 seconds? <laughs> 30 seconds? And I recently yeah. played Battle of the Sexes. That was cool. Um, all the dash is like a lot of work, though. <laughs> 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah. I only remember one word from Boulder Dash, bro. Thirty seconds is a time of game. <laughs> hey, thirty seconds is a game in the relationships, yo. Yo, that that can end. That's a dangerous game, that day. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> How many fights have you had through thirty seconds, like with your teammates? Plenty. Now I'm the person of the Plenty. The guys can never win in thirty yes. seconds. That's like the given law. No, nobody wants to lose. So it comes with it. Eh? <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> regards another question here. Um, Jason, you still have your snacks, and what snacks do you enjoy during lockdown? Zuby, you can also give us some. But let's start with Jason. Okay. So, I actually don't have any left. Um, <laughs> but there is a peppermint tart in the fridge. Which is being cleaned up. Yeah, it's gonna be your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh. but, but 
to be fair, the thing that I've been having the most is popcorn. Um, but popcorn that you make in a pot, not the one that you make in the microwave. Because that just eats differently. It tastes a lot better than the ones that you put in the microwave. <laughs> True though. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But you, I want, I want the popcorn machine, man. That would be what the, what have you been doing to? Well, like, have you been working out during the lockdown? Or I've been doing like you can call it like a heat session for like an hour most days. It's all you can do because right? there's no way to run. Don't really have a lot of weights or anything, so. Yeah. You try to pick. You try to pick up stuff over the internet most of the time. Try and add that. Like you see all these people doing stuff on social media, and you feel bad if you don't do anything. So you are, you kind of forced to do something. Everyone, everyone's coming out with fitness tutorials. Yeah. Yeah, I just I'm showing the daily progress. The design. Have you been doing any uh, cricket uh, training? Well, it's not training, but we play the yard. Oh, okay. Take up the one side of the tennis ball. Several ways. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and you? Have you and Uncle Nizam been playing in the yard? <laughs> the guy wants to pry now, so we're probably going to do that. Um, okay. And he wants to, like, paint the house. <laughs> <laughs> Painting is tough, yo. Like cutting lines and stuff. That is so boring. Sure. Man must be but you gotta do it. Can't go fishing. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of it like I haven't trained cricket wise. I've just been doing workouts most days as well. Um so yeah. Did you guys want to find the state of it? Trying to stay away from all the, the snacks and stuff, but it's you at home the whole day and there's like a packet of chips here and there. It's hard to say no. Once you get started, like half a packet's gone already. <laughs> Subi's house is bad as well. There's like a bowl of sweets that's in the middle of the house. I actually haven't touched those at no. all. Every time I go there, I have to at least like take some. Is that Very a bad. Thing? Yeah, I think that's a Muslim thing, bro. Because like almost it could be. <laughs> it could be thing, bro. Like I even I haven't even touched it. Like I'm just yo. Sweets are bad. <laughs> Trying to get into good shape. <laughs> this sweet is nice though. <laughs> Did you guys uh, watch your Netflix stuff that you've been watching? I I, I just finished Money Eyes. Yo, insane. The first two seasons are better than the last two, I think. Yeah, but it was still great. Yeah. yeah um, I mean, I've been watching Friends. Oh, wow. But it, it is so funny, though. I never That's expected it. I won't lie. <laughs> but sure. What? Have you not watched it? It is so funny. I've seen it like every now and then, but now I actually sat down and I watched it episode by episode. Oh, shit. I didn't yeah. know that. Crazy. So funny no. though, your Joey is on another level. I started, uh, I started watching, well, I finished the whole series Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and that was like super dry humor. Your humor. I, I, yeah, I love like every single episode. But now I started watching, I started watching um, Sherlock, uh, what Sherlock? Oh, the original one, the the series. Yeah, the so original then, with Benedict Cumberbatch. Pretty good, yeah. pretty good so far. I've only like only two episodes in, but it's pretty good. No, but that's where he made his Benedict made his name in that show. That was yeah. That's what showed his acting chops. Three of those are No, I haven't watched it yet. I haven't even started it. Let's watch it. You must watch it. Yeah. I watched. Um, I, I like watching stuff that's stupid. Like I don't have to think whatever. So I watched uh, the invention of lying. Yeah, that's dumb funny. Movie. <laughs> dumb movie, but it's funny. funny. Um, yeah. And I watched uh, 
Holmes and Watson with um, John C. Riley and Will Ferrell. Hmm. Step Brothers. Holmes and Watson. It's dumb, but it's funny. <laughs> cool, but you seem like that type of guy. With typical Rondo Bush boy, he's like dry humor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I can say that. I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I watched uh, the Spider into the multiverse, Spider Man. So you oh, must have watched that. Great. I love it. How did you think of that? What did you think about that? I thought it was cool. Yeah. You know, the story like, didn't watch it, 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 if I'm honest. You didn't want, you don't like Marvel stuff at all, though, right? I do. I know. I know it's Ruby does, but J- Jason, do you like? Did you watch any of the Avengers and stuff like that? Uh, sorry, I can't hear anything. It lag. Can you watch it again? Um, did are you not into J- the Avengers and stuff like that? Marvel movies. Oh, yeah, I've I've seen all of them. Oh, okay, cool. But then watching into the Spider Verse is good. It's a it's, although it's a comic. It's an animation, it's not a... so good though. So you talking about the one on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah. We'll give it a watch. I haven't, I haven't, because I, I've seen that it's like a little cartoon, so I haven't given it any attention. Yeah. But anyway, guys, it's just the album art. I think we're boring people enough now. <laughs> There are no more other questions that anyone wants to ask. There is one, there is one from uh, from Gio again asking Ronaldo. Sure. It's a good question. This, I want to hear this one actually. Um, I'll go with Ronaldo. Um, to be fair, they're, okay, they're both special in their own way, but for me, Ronaldo is just a more a better, a more complete player than Messi. Ronaldo can give you things that Messi can't. Where Ronaldo can almost deliver from a technical front of of Messi, but I just feel Ronaldo gives a bit more of an aerial threat. He gives a bit more than what Messi does. For me, it's tougher because. Um, Messi has more vision as a player, but he's predominantly attacking um, and for large part of my argument between the two, I felt like I was leaning towards Messi, but the past few years I've like started to lean more towards Ronaldo. Um, but that's because like all around, not just player, but also person, they're different. So, I know, I just think Ronaldo might be, have, have a better impact in most games, at, for club and country. So, yeah, I think, I, I, uh, I think Ronaldo, he fits into, he would be able to fit into a lot more teams than Messi would. Mm. So, a team is built around Messi where Ronaldo, for me, Ronaldo could rather, he could fit into a team. Yeah. So if I had to tell you that, I don't know if you does, guys... Does you agree with us, Ronaldo over Messi? Or... I don't know where he is now. Maybe he's um, I don't know how long you guys have been supporting like, put on, but if I had to ask you a question because of United and the Liverpool connection thing. The current Liverpool, the current Liverpool team, right? Okay? Or the 2008 Champions League winning United team. So if you if you know all the players, like go through the United players for you, if you didn't remember them. But that was with Ronaldo, Rooney, Tevez, Skull, Eric, Ferdinand, Bridge. So it was a joke. Jones wasn't there yet, no. Yeah, for it, for it, No man, not Jones. Um, Brown, Jones. I think. Brown and John O'Shea, those guys. Um, Hargreaves in and out. Um, uh, who else was there? Nani was there. Um, Park Chisung, Evera. So 
So that that's Van der Sar was the keeper. So that 2008 Champions double winning team versus the you can say Liverpool's team now. We haven't won anything but that team now. Okay, to be to be is obviously it's, taking the. It's level hard to compare though. Like the teams play two different styles of football, and football yeah, back I, then was played a different way to the, the way it is played today. Though, like for example, Liverpool have a very attacking brand of football um, nowadays versus the way United play back then under Fergie time and stuff like that, where they could control the game and pull it up out of that at the end of a game kind, yeah. <coughs> kind of thing so the question is actually if you look to if you want to compare the two based on players trophies then then you would say man united of 2008 because of the trophies they want but in terms but of the you, style of football and the way the teams play now or well, the local team of now this is the way they played then then it's up to the individual on which kind of football they enjoyed watching but he's, he's asking if you put both teams on paper next to each other man for man not on, not, not on not on what style <laughs> yeah you're obviously taking liverpool but i think i I'm mean if you're gonna push me to decide then <laughs> there's your answer okay yeah. uh, I, I think i disagree i disagree I'll go with the United squad. Obviously. People, okay, we can compare base for base then. Ronaldo then, right? Salah now. Ronaldo. No, Ronaldo. Any Ronaldo. If I look on the other side. No, you got to go left wing versus left wing. But Ronaldo switched. I don't know. Yeah, huh? But I'm saying you can go Sadio Mane now versus Ronaldo then. Well, that's a lot tougher. It's a lot tougher still Ronaldo. Look at his stats in England. It's not the same as they were in Serie A and in uh, La Liga. In terms of goals per game and impacts per game. Impacts on the result of each game then. When he was a youngster at Manu versus Salad. I mean Mane now. For Liverpool. Ronaldo had 38 goals that season. In all competitions. In, in all, all competitions. They were playing all comps though. But they 38 goals in all How much does mine have all competition? Let me actually go <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you look at the quality of the player, you cannot say that mine it's like a clear cut back then. Because Ronaldo definitely got better throughout the years. He got way better, yeah. Like he started exactly. scoring 50 goals a season, but nobody scored 50 goals a season. But I mean, he was already that great then. He was already this quality great then. He scored 26 goals, I think, in the Premier League that year. Mane scored 36 so far this season. All comps. 26 but, in the Premier League, 8 in the Champions League, 2 in the Club World Cup. So then it's equal. So, um, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. You can't say it's an easy decision to make. Yes. You go. You know, I'm it's it's easy decision. I'm assist. Ronaldo, remember that. Ronaldo was a good assist. A cross of the ball yeah. as well. It caused a lot of trouble with regards to that as well. <laughs> that is that is a bit unfair to Zubi actually. To United <laughs> Actually mine is got thirty-eight so far with uh let's check here. Please switch to your mobile data. And yes, this is one there. Okay, let's have a look here. Um Does he 
Ronaldo em Premier League. Right? In 2008-2009, is this now yet? What, what is, is this correct now? Is this the right season? No, this is the wrong season. It's the season before, so 2007-2008, that's when we won the Champions League, no? I don't know, you should know, you're the, you're the expert on the matter. In the Premier League, he scored 31 goals, right? Ronaldo. In the Premier League, eight in the Champions League, three in the FA Cup, so 42 goals in total. 42. Did Liverpool yeah. finish the Premier League so far this season? Oh, no, I was just wondering. I was just wondering. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm in sure it then Mane could have another the Champions team. League. But you're out of the Champions League. So yeah. Quick fast. <laughs> Just let it go. Give it, Just let it, it go. Let it go. Let it go. No way. Okay. Go. Maybe you win on the Salah side. So I'm thinking of that front three. So you probably win. Unless, unless you play Tevez, if you're going to play a front three striker for, because we had Tevez, Ronaldo, and Rudy. So, okay. So you think of it. Ronaldo, yeah, let's go. Let's compare the 2005 Istanbul Liverpool side then. <laughs> One okay. night in Istanbul. The, the Istanbul side to the 1999 Champions League um, triple winning team. Okay, but the today. No, I'm saying now, if you want to go 2005 to classic teams, let's go classic and go 1999 Champions League team, the triple winning team. Bro, I was four years old then. Not your age. <laughs> like that, that was never ever going to happen that I remember that. It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult question because they posed the same question to um, to Gary, Gary Neville and um, Carragher. And then they asked them exactly the what, same. What did Carragher say? No, well, Carragher, they were kind of... I was surprised that actually Gary Neville picked a lot of the players. He, he picked, for example, Salah was, it was, the, it was a difficult one because they had to mix the teams together and pick who was the best then and now. So they picked the Arnold, Arnold. I think Arnold was the right back. They picked, yeah, like there's no doubt that you see, he didn't want to pick himself, Daddy. So he's like, even though, even if, he, if it was him, it would have been Arnold anyway if Arnold was there. Center back, he put Van Dijk and he said Ferdinand. That was his center back instead of Village, which I was like, wow, this village was a beast. But okay, Ferdinand. Okay. And... What? <laughs> Not you, <laughs> you <better not> missing around. <laughs> now you are probably missing around. Okay, look at uh, this. Left back, he said Evra. Left back, he said Evra. I think both of them said Evra, actually. Over Robertson, if I remember correctly. I personally think Robertson is a very underrated player, to be honest. He doesn't get the props that he deserves because of Arizona Arnold's success. Mudfield, he didn't take Anderson. Anderson, sorry. He didn't take Anderson. He didn't take Anderson from United. He didn't take. He put, I think he put Carrick in that side because Gary knows Carrick well and they put Carrick in that side skulls in that side but i think that's where the complication came in because skulls and gigs at that time were older i think they necessarily their prime prime so people kind of that's where it was like iffy because gig, um gary never was like any day of the week skulls in. like it doesn't matter how old he is whereas they think they were like a little bit more like 
on the maybe Henderson side and Carrick was more on the Henderson, Henderson, Fabinho, those players side. Um, wingers, front three, the only one they changed is, yeah, they said Salah, Ronaldo. I think it was Salah, Ronaldo and up front was Tevez. But they mixed it. It's a, it's a trick of over Mane, basically. They didn't compare Ronaldo to Salah for that position. No, they didn't. But it doesn't but it doesn't really because Salah plays on the right. Yeah, Ronaldo plays on the left. So earlier Ronaldo, when he tried to play. But Ronaldo played on the right for United. And then sometimes you switch. Ronaldo the right winger that crossed in the ball like David Beckham. That was his main thing. And then he became more of a scorer and they switched the front three. So Rooney used to come on the left hand side sometimes, chop in, shoot and cross. Um, Rooney was playing all over the place. He wasn't playing as a central striker. He was playing a winger. In, in that particular match, you, you, you'll see. But so you're telling me they've used Ronaldo on the right wing and compared him to Salah, but they said, nah, Salah must stay right wing. <laughs> oh no, they picked Ronaldo. I think. I think. I'm opening now. This time, that's the last between Ronaldo, so that's why they didn't compare the two of them. There's no way that you can go sleep. Then you can go sleep. Uh, let me see what their team was again. It doesn't really matter. I still think that 2018 was special. It was a pity that they didn't win that FA Cup. I mean, the yeah, that year. I think they won the. I think they won the Carling Cup though, but they didn't win the FA Cup. But they didn't win the treble. Only won a double. Yes, Gary. You've, uh, you've showcased your extensive knowledge of football history. Yes, yeah, Gary's team. Yeah. <coughs> Yo, <laughs> Badgeri. No, that's not yeah. it. Yo, sure. some would say you're more focused on Liverpool than Man U. <laughs> Did I pick the guy? Van Dijk, Bay. This is the wrong team. This is not the right team. This is the current Don't combined team. Players. Yeah, this is the current combined team. The current combined team, so... Yeah, if you take players for player now, what is your 11? So you're just going to take all Liverpool and he's going to take all... Your, um, you won't take all United, I know you won't. <laughs> if I know you were... No, I, I would be fair, I would be fair. Yeah. I'm Pogba fair. and Bruno <laughs> would have to be in the team. I'd also be fair, there'd be maybe like one or two United players. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay. I, I think Bailey is better than majority. If Bailey fit, right? But he's better ba than Bailey versus uh, next to Van Dijk. Yeah. Go That's on. I, th I, think Rob I think at the moment, Wamba Saka is better than Robertson from a defensive point but of view. Isn't he playing right back? Come on, you even confessed it the other day. Your ultimate team is Roberts, I mean, as Trent Alexander Arnold, not one Bersaka because he's too expensive to buy with cash. I got Arnold for free. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you going ten Alexander Van Dijk Bailey? No, it depends. Robinson over sure, that's for sure. No, but look here, Robinson over sure, yeah. But with Arnold, it's a difficult one for me because it depends what style of football I'm playing. So if I'm gonna play with attacking wing backs and attacking right back, left back, then I'll take Arnold any day. Okay. But Robinson is a very better defender. So no one's gonna come past one Bissaka, but people can beat Arnold. But, he, but yeah. now, fortunately, you've got Van Dijk in your team. 
So now you don't have to worry about the depends. Then I'll take on. Exactly. I'll take on. But Pogba needs to be in the team. Bruno Fernandez needs to be in the team. Then it is only between Mikaito or Van Alden. I don't rate Henderson to be honest. I'll put Gini in the team. That Just is all Fernandez and Pogba. Fernandez and Pogba. And then we can put Gene. Fabinho is definitely a holding mid, son. Come on. So you want Fabinho, Pogba, Bruno? Yeah. I'll go. I'll agree with that. I'll go. Alden is also solid. We're going to play a 4 3 3, though. So it's three up front. Okay, so it's Salah, Mane. And Martial for me, over for me now. Or Rashford, or Rashford, or Rashford. Look here. <clears throat> you're pushing it now, eh? Now you're saying there's going to be... See, who's your keeper? <laughs> who's your keeper? <laughs> hey? Who's your keeper? I think on form, but that can be better. On form. Addison. So you want a six five split between the two squads. I think that's fair. I think Liverpool Liverpool's a team more than anything than, than star players. I think you guys are more of a team that can That's adapt. what we're trying to be at the Cobras, eh? That's what we're trying to be at the Cobras. <laughs> Because I'm not going to win this football battle, so I might as well change the subject back to cricket. <laughs> and none of my, Where's the Liverpool fans out there? I need some support Your here. People don't... <laughs> they ask you, well, they ask you who's the best footballer in the current squad, in the Cobra squad. <laughs> Yo. Um, Does management count as well? Yo, because that's... <laughs> Challenge that's a bad question. Because SUP's up there, as much as it takes to, it hurts to say that. Sure. SUP's up there. Did you see that, Tom? He's up there. Did you see, why didn't you reply to the golf challenge that he gave you guys? I don't even nominate me. You nominated I'm, Zubi. In my life, I don't think I'll ever be able to do that. I'll give it a crack, though. No, but these, the nomination no, is won't. anything with no end. You just have to be what he did. Yeah, but I want to do that though. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't be easy, surely. Was awesome, it was man. Like yo, when he did that, I was like yo, that's 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 proper. Best footballer in the current Cobra squad. Yo, not let's not say staff. Let's say player. In terms of ability, PT was probably. And then probably Zubi. Then, but now with, the, now with them, them having left, left and stuff, who else? Now with the scan side now. I don't know, you haven't seen, Zubi. you maybe haven't seen others. Than... Give it to Zubi. Give it to Zubi. Thanks. <laughs> he loves the praise of yes. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually trying to think now. Nah. I think uh, the ad yeah. is very good. Apparently, the ad is but very good. But we haven't seen him. Yeah. I think we've always had a standard of football, though, in warm ups, in our side. No, it's and Whenever we're training not up to a professional standard in terms of intensity, then it always comes out how can you play football in warm ups? With such high intensity, and it comes to training time, and you can't do it at the same intensity. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that, but. <laughs> Who asked that? No, I'm just saying, whenever oh. we don't, you know, to stand with, <laughs> then we get clapped <laughs> up by the coaches saying that our intensity during football is sky high. Oh. To... I think people just have a passion for football. <laughs> So, what else do we? I always ask, Maybe. what else do you guys do besides that? 
what else do you guys do besides like have you guys went out into competitive situations like paintballing and temp and bowling shit like that stuff like that together as a team um Yo, no the last time we went temp and bowling we made the the milan's upset Subi wasn't there so <laughs> i put money down and the milan's so they're very competitive they want to win everything so they put the under back down, the eighteen. So it was Peter and Yanaman first. Um Ashwell and Sherman, our trainer. Um and then Carl and David. And then myself and Andre. And then the Malans were saying, Yeah, we'll put our money down, we really do win. They even had like a like ones before and then they lost. Yo, they were upset. They were upset. But myself and Andre won just to throw that in there. Oh, of course. But we don't. No wonder you told the kid. Yeah, that's actually a good idea, though. That we should actually. I yeah. feel like a group point position would be. Done. A lot better. That's great. <laughs> I I was like. I never went before, man. I went once, and I was like, "Yo, this is amazing." I was like, "I'm." It's like Where's Call of Duty, but we like. <laughs> Um, we went, I don't actually remember where it was. Um, some farm place. Did we put it in the mix there for? There was cows Steven. on the actual. Cows. See, so every pre-season we have like a, a team building. So. Yeah, to an extent mm. it's a bit of a getaway. And then during that time we have different activities that we do it's got nothing mm -hmm. to, majority of the time it's got nothing to do with cricket yeah of course. Uh, we do have um like kind of sit down sessions where we chat about things that we need to be better in um mm -hmm. not just on the field but off the field as a squad and then hopefully those things if we implement it I would then produce better performances yeah. from a team so we have those kind of sit down not lecture sessions because it's more open to anyone that wants to talk and give the input. Um, so that would happen like every day, maybe like the morning. Um, and then it would come the afternoon and we, as a squad, we'd kind of do a lot of activities. Um, some challenging, like two different teams within the squad. Uh, we've done like a master chef already. Um, oh, yeah. So stuff like that. And then, um who won the master shift challenge no it was more it was two different groups two different two three, different three, that they selected three. and three sorry and then you have to then prepare a meal with whatever they give you um i think we got like 20 minutes to make the meal or something there yeah. um and the coaches or like the 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 staff members they would then act yeah. as judges so then they would then decide um, so what meals were made? Oh, I can't even remember. Like, Jason has a good menu. <laughs> he seems to remember a lot of shit. Oh wow, lazy. He he seems to remember a lot of things. So so each one of us, each team had like their own um, kind of bry area, to, like prepare meat. You could use a wok, stuff like that. And then there's like I don't know, I can't remember. Some of there's us made. I think our group made like a. I can't wait. What? I can't hear. What did we make during the Master Chef challenge? Sure. It was, I don't know. I think it was, it could have been lovers. It could have been lovers. Um, I actually don't remember. And beans and lovers. I don't know. It wasn't like something that was like a steak or something. It was something ridiculous. Oh. You guys so won. Did give group one. That's all that I did. Yeah, I know. I know. PT, PT prepared our chicken. I think it was lovers. Um, because he, him and Avi, whenever they go to Nando's, they have that. So I think they were just on top of it. God, you lover. You can't do it either. Um. So yeah, and then like there's a whole lot of other activities that we that we've been doing. Um, we've even had like uh, karaoke evenings and stuff like that. So, you're the best singer. 
Definitely not me. Um, it's like honey. <laughs> How embarrassing is that? That uh, was the best thing ever. When I saw that on TV, yo, bro. Yannis <laughs> um, can sing, eh? Yeah, Yannis can sing, right? He even uh, does that. I'm talking while he's going. He's like, who, who wow. else can sing? Ah, yeah. <laughs> JP. I know David Brook has a... JP. JP can sing. David Brook, our... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of his actual... Sure. Say our team Name. coordinator. Oh, he's he's in media. Yeah. He's in charge of media or stadium media or something like that. Um, he's got a very powerful voice. So he can sing. Um, no yeah, Brookie can, can sing. That's for sure. Yeah, we're all just a bunch of misfits on the, on the mic in our hand. <laughs> We get another question here from an Indian fan. Obviously, he's going to ask this question. The Kako Rohit. I don't know why he's asking the Kako Rohit, but sure. it's because of opening. I wouldn't. Uh... Who is that? Um, is that the real David Muller, though? No, it's not. Even <laughs> 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 is there, well. <laughs> um, sure. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with the cop. That's a tough one. Crowley, South Africa. Are you talking about specifically opening the batting or? Kuni, Kuni can bat anyway. That's the obvious. So, yeah. I think it has to be open because. It's I'm gonna good. go with natural ability. And just what he can still do for mm. South African cricket, Quentin de Kock. Now, Quentin, that's my old. Okay, fair. He's our old, our old Quentin now. He's like 27, 28. Yeah, I think really. So he's still got a long few years ahead of him, of which he could actually do worldly things for cricket South Africa so yeah. or for the Proteus uh, so yeah. yeah I thought you're talking about Rawit Rawit's already 32 so no and what is only 27 so it's a long way to go to him I still wanted to bet up for Uruguay I wanted to bet four are you talking about well you can decide now so obviously he must decide my decision to make, but I'm just saying, I'm talking about, I'm just saying, opinion, my opinion you is that I the order in case credible. Yeah, four. Well, that's <laughs> up to him, <you>, yeah. <laughs> no, he, he, he can bet wherever he wants to, to be fair. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I think Cal needs to get into that side, you know, the wicked people that can, like, I think so talented. If that happens, even that's even better. Yeah. For the Cobras, I mean. Cobras were in a good place, I feel like. Yeah. Your, your team on paper, your first team, your first 11, in all formats, I think it's potent. I'm worried. I'm more worried about with when you guys when you guys lose the players to the, to the Proteas and the backups. But... I haven't seen um, Ishmael and Ziad Bow, Ziad Bow and Ishmael back yet to me to right to say how good they are or not. Um, and also, I haven't. I've seen Savage. I've seen Colin Bosch. I think he's top class. I think he has. He's also has a lot of potential. I mean, Iman and Jason as the two all rounders in that team, potent. So, um, yeah. At the end of the day, at the end of the day. With regards to our squad, I feel like if you have a squad where players don't move up, you'd rather have players move up than players underperform and get dropped for other players to get opportunity. Am I right? Yeah. So, with regards to our squad, it's it's not the worst thing when players go play at the next level because, I mean, first of all, they're friends 
of ours as teammates they we also friends so we can be happy for one another if they get recognized for good performances at the next level yeah um on the other hand you'd rather have guys go up and then give opportunity to guys that firstly haven't had much opportunity and other guys that are just coming to the squad that haven't played franchise level there's only one way to get used to the levels by playing at it um so and experiencing what the level is about so for me if if there's guys that go up then it's not the end of the world because you're giving guys that aren't playing that have played franchise level opportunity to play and you can give guys that haven't played yet at franchise levels opportunity to play and i think that's where um a big way of going about giving opportunity can be done a bit better because a lot of the time in the past um you've kind of had those fluctuations in the team um but then also guys then still don't get enough opportunity even when that happens so the, if players are moving up more guys are going to get opportunity at franchise level yeah which is good for us even if they haven't played much at franchise level they have to get that opportunity because you have to remember they've also been performing at provincial level so they also have to be rewarded for their good performances so everyone has to get off i mean a big part of the game is opportunity and i feel like a lot of time that's why people leave franchises i mean we don't have to deny that fact i mean people move because opportunity is scarce from where they are and yeah. they move elsewhere hoping that opportunity will be better yeah so yeah and like Faji will say 100 percent <laughs> Jason, anything you want to add? Ask Ruby. Sure. Okay. Nah. <laughs> I don't have anything. <laughs> Not on record. You can't ask me anything on record. <laughs> uh, uh, Are you captain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Nah, I don't know. I just assumed from last from because of the way that the season went towards the end that you would be. I don't know. I don't have any inside line on that. I just assumed that you would be. I thought that was confirmed. Oh, when I, when the picture came out, squads announced. You know, COVID squads Ooh, announced. The face. The Ruby face. was there. Cash was there. So I was like, the face. Okay, there must be this. The <laughs> at, least, at least the fade was in then. Now the fade's not in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, wait, I did, didn't even ask you about the, the short, the T20 format, um, MSL. Something that you guys want to obviously want to be a part of that more, you know. Um, is there any yeah, plan? Obviously, in, yeah, any plan in place? Is that's a stupid question to ask? I feel because um, you obviously are doing everything that you possibly can to try to make it. But what exactly does it mean when you say you're doing everything that you can to possibly make it into those sides? Does the Africa T20 Cup, for example, not the Africa T20 Cup, but the T20 Oh, well, for me, I think yeah. I, I, I didn't even hear the end, but for me, it's like it's tough to know that what you've improved on in the T20 format because when Africa Cup approaches, you don't know if you're going to be selected or not, and you don't know if your performances from the year before is good enough to validate your spot in any of the squads, and then from there, you you're unsure for the MSL because the MSL could go any could go anyway because did and obviously the management for yeah. whichever team they have their combinations or whatever in order already so it, it's the only way you can get that is to 
is by hoping you get an opportunity in Africa Cup and to to kind of make a statement there. But by then they kind of already know what combinations they want. So for me, it's kind of tough in the MSL because there's such a limited space already, and majority of the space has been taken up by international players. So that's local and foreign international players. So it's it's tough to compete when you're competing for three or four spots. So they're always going to look for specialists in that sense. Me too. Yeah. Um, what Jason says is correct. Um, there's a lot of players in in the structure in provincial and franchise level that obviously don't get to compete in the Africa, I mean, the MSR. So your only opportunity to then stake a claim to have people be involved uh, or be interested in selecting you for the MSR is then to play in the Africa Cup because that's the only other T20 comp there is. Mm. Um, so, then let, so then if you go play Africa Cup, which um, I didn't take part in last year because I was in India at the time, but there's players that then play Africa Cup that play on the coast because co some coastal um, unions then host Africa Cup for that specific group. And on the coast, when it's not summer yet, the pitches aren't so great. Um, they aren't great batting wickets. Um, so majority of the time you've got low scoring T20 games, which doesn't really give much excitement to the game, but also confidence because I mean, T20, you want to see um, bowlers bowling quickly and knocking stumps out the ground. You want to see batters hitting massive sixes, stuff like that. And majority of the times that's not the case when it comes to Africa Cup. So by the time MSL comes, the teams aren't really looking at many players from the provincial setup because um, just the performances aren't there, barring one or two players. Um, and I think Mar Marco Maria was the, the first player to do that in the mm -hmm. Africa Cup, I think. Um, so if you don't play Africa Cup or for some reason you uh, you injured at the time, so you miss out on that opportunity, come uh, six months later or a couple months later, um, comes the MSL auction um, and in that two months maybe prior to that after Africa Cup and before MSL you're playing four-day cricket so you don't have much opportunity to impress anyone um, during that time and that's just the reality of things the only way you can uh, kind of force that interest in you is by as a bowler if you taking a whole lot of wickets in a one-day comp or better you scoring a whole lot of runs so about weight of runs or performances that's the only real way to kind of show that you are capable of playing in a with a red ball or with a white ball or stuff like that so it, you have to kind of make the most of your opportunity a lot of people then write off the msl and say no they'll never be able to take part and then some people also set that as a goal I want to be involved in that competition because one, it's fun. Everyone wants to take part in it. You're competing against teams that are all of a high standard and include a kind of international flavor to the teams. And you're playing um, in front of slightly bigger crowds. So that whole kind of performance act show piece, everyone wants to be part of it because it gives you kind of a platform to then express yourself and show what you're capable of doing. And that's kind of just been the the reality of the MSL, but hopefully they hopefully they still have it to start with. And secondly, hopefully they can find a way or funding to kind of get another two teams involved um, to kind of give more um, opportunity to not just franchise players, but to also provincial players that could be special in a T20 format versus other formats, for example. We've seen it in other parts of the world, in India, where 
the IPL is used as a kind of stepping stone to kind of show peace, showcase what the younger guys are capable of. And maybe that that is where the MSL would go then if we find a way to continue it in the coming years. Can you tell me your Mexican mustache? Nah, I shaved, I shaved it. I shaved it. Why? I shaved it. And I haven't shaved it again. Well, I shaved it a couple of times and then I didn't shave it again. Well, you had a proper, proper tattoo. Like <laughs> every time I went, every time I like lifted my top lip, like it was like literally like Senore. a piece of law. <laughs> Peaceful world. Okay, it's horrible. Sorry for this conversation. Um, I must say thank you to the fans for tuning in. A lot of comments, a lot of uh, questions that were, were given to both of you. Thank you, Zubi, for being such a sport to come on and ask Jason some questions. Thank you, Jason, for telling me your story. Even though your story was a bit interrupted by connection issues, you did get it out finally. Um, so we are going to put didn't the... know it was me. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we are going to, what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the site for people to watch back. Um, so just to remember that they must be in mind that when you tell the people, just tell them to skip through some of the parts because I can't, I'm going to try to edit it out as best as I can. So shot guys and we'll speak again. Cool. See you. Cheers. Shot bro. Stay safe. <laughs>